Welcome friends. We are your hosts, Sandy and Wade, baby best friends turned husband and wife and business partners. This podcast is for the dreamers, the movers and shakers, and those who seek to attract their dream life. Strap in, getting magnetic in three, two, one. Like attracts like. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. This moment in time, this is your time to rise. It's Sandy Critties. You get me today. Do you have a moment in time that literally redefined your purpose, your life, gave you hope again, shifted your perspective, like all the things. I have to share this moment with you. So I have shared tidbits of this story. Um, If you're a close friend, you've probably heard this story, but I have to share this on this platform because every time I share this story with someone, it re-energizes me to my core. It reminds me like of my purpose And I just think it's really, really powerful. I think when you're least expecting something sometimes, but you have an open mind and an open heart and you're seeking something, it's often seeking you. So I got to set the stage. So I'm about to tell you a story that took place on May 31st of 2018. This day is like ingrained in my mind. So just to set the stage of where I was in my life at this time, Wade and I had just recently moved back to California I was super unhappy in my job. It literally sucked the soul out of me. I was not yet in any of the ventures that I'm in now. And this was what, three years, a little over three years ago. I was not in network marketing. I had not, you know, started this podcast with Wade. We were not investing in real estate. We were not making a big impact. Like it was literally like I was working in exchange for money and I felt like I was made for so much more and I just didn't know what it was. So at the time I was in real estate and real estate is a great lucrative career for a lot of people. I was a business broker, working for a business broker, selling businesses, and I'd only been doing it since that February. So it was literally only like four months in. I'd only ever sold two businesses and it was very, very stressful because I'd be like pounding the pavement to get new clients and deals. And sometimes they'd go through and you'd make a nice chunk of change, but you have no idea when the next one's coming. So I was under a lot of stress financially because I'm not one to be like, okay, I'm going to rely on Wade or... I don't know. I just feel like I have to like bring in my own. And so I felt when you don't feel like happy in your work, I swear it like leaks into different parts of your life. So I was super unhappy with work. I was super insecure about my body. I was super disconnected from my soul. Um, Wade and I were living in my dad's condo, a one bedroom, one bath on Laguna beach rent free because I wasn't making much money. And we were just kind of in this in-between stage a few weeks before on May 6th of 2018, I was in the room with my sister when she gave birth to her second daughter, my niece. And I'm not going to get into the details of this, but that birth was extremely traumatic. Um, it was really scary what I saw and what Tanya, my sister went through and it, I've never been so scared in my life actually. And I've seen her give birth before. Like, it's not that I'm just scared of birth. It was like what went down. And so it triggered a lot of things in me. And I told Wade, I was like, you know what? I don't want to have babies anymore. Like, I know we've talked about it, but like you and I have a good thing going, like why ruin it? Like, I don't want to have kids. And he was like, what the hell? Like we're getting married on New Year's Eve, like in six months. Like you can't just hit me with, I don't want to have kids. Like that's my legacy. Like that's what we're here for. And so we started going to premarital therapy. Um, I started doing like PTSD, um, therapy and like EMDR and all this stuff to heal me from like literally the absolute trauma that was triggered in me. And by the way, I should say my sister and niece are both alive and well and healthy. Um, but I didn't know that was going to be the case at the time. So anyway, I was basically, I'm really setting the stage coming up to May 31st of 2018. I was in a really, really fragile state of my life. Like I felt like completely disconnected, like Wade 
yes, Wade was amazing. And like, I was so grateful to have Wade in my life. But outside of that, I felt like really lonely and I felt really confused about my purpose. I felt very unfulfilled. Um, and I just felt sad and depressed and anxious. And I used to have a lot of panic attacks growing up. I'm so grateful I've like moved past that, but a lot of that stuff was being triggered and brought out in me. And so I went to my dear friend, Inessa, and I was like, Inessa, I've never, like, I don't even know who I am right now. Like I am so not okay. Like I need help. And she was like, oh my God, you need to go to my iridologist. And I'm like, or iridologist, I don't even know how to say it. And I was like, what's that? And she's like, oh my God, she's like this holistic healer. Like she's been doing it for like 25 years. My family's been going to her for forever. She's amazing. Um, she's gonna be able to give you answers and like guide you. And so I didn't really know what to expect. This lady does not know who I am at all. I just called me an appointment. And on May 31st of 2018, I go to this appointment. And basically what she does is she takes a picture of your eyeball and like blows it up on this big screen with this machine that she has. And your iris is the compass to your organs. So your left eye represents what's going in the left side of your body and your right eye represents what's going on in the right side of your body. So she blows this up, my left eye we start with, and she was like, oh my gosh, dear, you have so much going on. And I'm like, I do? Okay, that makes me feel good because like, I am not myself. Like I need I need to get realigned, like what is going on? And so she's like, just starts going through this whole list of things. She's like, okay, um, you have, she's like, this one, is, don't be too worried about this, but I'm just, you know, going to tell you what I see. You have a dime size fluid filled cyst on your left ovary. I'm like, what? How do you know that? And then she's like, oh, tell me about when you broke your tailbone. I'm like, huh? I'm like, how the hell does she know that? And then she's like, oh, you still have residual, like I'm I'm just telling you like things that I'm remembering. You still have residual liquid in your um, lungs from when you had bronchitis. And I'm like, bronchitis? I'm like, did I have bronchitis? I'm like, what is she talking about? And then she's like, oh, yep, you got a parasite. Are you O positive blood type? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? So she starts going through this whole list of things. And I'm like, wait, this is pretty crazy that she's identifying all this from my eye. So right now, as you're listening to this, I don't know if you're like, if you're not driving, you can do this, but just Google like iridology chart and you will be amazed at what you see. Basically, like I said, your iris is the compass to all the organs in your body. It literally is a map for iridologists like this who, who have studied this to identify different things going on in your body that are affected to all parts of you, your hormone system, your endocrine system, like literally everything. She could tell me that my hormones were completely out of whack. She could tell that I was suffering from severe, severe grief and like post-traumatic stress, like literally everything she like could identify down to a T. She was like asking about like my, I forget which vertebrae it was, but like specific vertebrae in my neck and spine and like saying that there was like tension in those specific areas. And oh my God, like I could go on and on and on. So she's telling me all this stuff and I'm like, the second I leave this place, I am going to call Red Cross because I've donated blood before and find out what type of blood type I have. Because if it's O positive, I'm going to absolutely freak out. I'm going to call my gynecologist. Oh, I should rewind. She told me I had um, extremely high levels of... Um, wow, I might mess this up. I honestly cannot remember now if it was progesterone or estrogen. I think it was... Wow. I don't want to mess it up. I don't remember. I had really high levels of one or the other. And I was on a birth control at the time that was like progesterone. Like, let's say I was really high in progesterone. I was on a progesterone only birth control. And it was like a metal rod in my arm that like is supposed to be like non-toxic or whatever, but it was obviously like messing with my hormones. So after I leave her that day, I call my gynecologist to schedule getting that metal rod, taking it out of my arm. And I also scheduled a vaginal ultrasound because I wanted them to confirm that I had a dime size fluid filled cyst on my left ovary. Like she had told me. Um, Oh, then I called my doctor uh, because she told me that bronchitis thing. And I was like, can you tell me, like, I don't remember, but have I ever had bronchitis? And they like, they're like, let us pull up your chart and we'll give you a call back. They call me back a couple hours later. They're like, yup, February of 2015, you had bronchitis and you came in here for that. We gave you a, I don't even remember what it was, a Z pack or something for it. And I was like, wait, what? Like I completely forgot about it. Obviously I blocked it out. It must've been traumatic, but I was like shocked that this woman had identified all these things. Okay. The story is long, but it's so freaking good. So 
after she's looking at my eyes and identifying all these things, she then puts my hand on this like scanner machine. I don't even know what it was. And it basically picks up on like, I'm really, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. So I'm really messing up like all the verbiage here. She would probably listen to this episode and be like, Sandy, you're not, (laughs) you're not using the right words. But anyway, I put my hand on this machine and apparently each person has like 400,000 energy, something that go through like them per second. And so it picks up on these energies or whatever. And every person has 76 biomarkers in their body that represent different things you may be susceptible to. These are things based off environmental factors. These are things based off of your genetics. Like there's so many things that play into it. So basically it prints out this like 12 page report that essentially cross verifies what she just saw by looking at my eye. So it was like, as if I was like I was already, I mean, I believed what she was telling me. Cause I'm like, wow, I did break my ta- tailbone. Wow. I do kind of feel like I might have a parasite because there's some weird shit going on. Like, wow, I do. You know? So I was like, Hmm, like there could be some truth to some of this stuff. But I also was like naturally a little bit skeptical. Cause I'm like, how the hell does she know this from looking at my eye? So this 12 page like report prints out and she's like, Oh my gosh, honey, 46 of your biomarker. No, 43 of your biomarkers are out of range out of 76. Right. So I was like, Oh my God, like, what are they? Okay. Well, the first one, the first major one that came up, 16 of my biomarkers were related to trauma. And she was like, wow, this is extreme amount of trauma. Like, did you just go through like a car accident or like what has happened in the past like the recent like past that is traumatizing because these numbers are insane. And I immediately start crying. And I was like, three weeks ago, my sister gave birth to my niece and my sister and the baby both almost died. Like it was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. And so I just start crying to this lady and she was like, honey, can I pray over you? And I was like, yes, no one's ever prayed over me. Like, I don't even know what that's like, but let's do it. So I closed my eyes and I will always remember this. She was standing behind me and her hands were on my shoulders. And I remember her saying this sentence. It was like the most comforting thing, but, and I should tell you too, like I was like a wreck. Like you'd think this woman was my therapist, but I start crying and I'm like, Oh my God. Like I thought I was going to lose my sister and I can't deal with more loss. Like I already lost my mom and I miss her every day. And my sister's my best friend. And it was so scary and triggering to think of like losing another family member and like the stuff my sister was screaming, like she was begging me and her husband, like to promise to take care of like her babies forever. And like, this was her time to go. And like, she was like basically surrendering to dying and it was the scariest thing ever. So I'm telling her all this stuff. And then I start telling her about my mom and how much I miss my mom. And she was like, honey, I need to pray over you. And I was like, okay. So I close my eyes. She's behind me, hands on my shoulders. And she's like, Lord, please remove the scars from this girl's heart. And that sentence like stuck with me. Because honestly, whether you believe whatever you believe in as a higher power, maybe you don't believe in a higher power, whatever. I don't care. Like, the sentence of asking for the scars from my heart to be removed felt like so freeing to me. I'm like, that's exactly it. I have scars all over my heart. I have so many scars all over my heart. We all do. We all go through really hard times in life. And I have done a lot of therapy and done a lot of healing, but they're, they're scars. They're like not going anywhere. Right. And so when she said that, I was like, wow, like what a beautiful prayer. Like what an amazing thing to ask for, to remove these from my heart. It felt like a reset. Like it felt like a total refreshing. I don't even know how to describe it. So anyway, she was praying over me. Like it was so powerful. And then she keeps going through this report. So 16 of the biomarkers were trauma, right? We verified, we know what that was from, okay? 13 of them, 13 of the biomarkers were related to skin toxicity. I was like, what the hell is that? And she's like, well, this is an easy one to fix. This one's based off the products that you're using. I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, if you're using, you know, like think about all the beauty products, perfumes, deodorants, body wash, you know, nail polish, like literally everything you use, like in your bathroom, in your shower, on your body, your skin is your biggest organ. 
So what you put on your skin absorbs into your body. It affects your endocrine system. It affects your hormone system. It goes, it it affects all parts of you. And that's like an easy fix, right? So I was like, wait, what? So she's like, avoid products with parabens, avoid products with phthalates. So I started becoming like the weeks after meeting with her, I became obsessed with researching clean products, which sidebar, that's why I do what I do today. If you are looking for clean products, I can seriously hook you up. Um, but it was like, you know, you, you'll hear me say that your mess can become your message. Like this was a big part of my mess. And now a big part of my message is helping people detox their life and become the healthiest, happiest version of themselves, like cleaning out their guts, like really, truly becoming intentional with how they live their life. Because we have so much control over our happiness. We have so much control over our life and our mindset and the way we feel every day by the foods that we eat, by the products that we use. It sounds crazy, but it does play a super huge role on your overall health. So 13 of these biomarkers were skin toxicity. I'm like, what? I could, I could get that number down to zero if I just used clean products. Like that seems like an easy fix. Two of them were related to a parasite. So she cross verified like some stuff she'd seen in my eye with like my digestion stuff. A good amount of them, I can't remember seven or eight or something like that was related to adrenals. She's like, honey, your adrenals are shot. Like, she's like, do you watch, uh, murder shows? And I was like, I listen to murder podcasts. I used to, I don't do this anymore. And she's like, you're retired from that. Like no more. Your adrenals are shot. You cannot handle stuff like that. Like that is going to absolutely deplete your adrenals. So your adrenals are like these, I think there's two adrenal glands, right? I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, there's your adrenals control, like they help like regulate, you know, like anything extreme. Like when you get scared, if you get shocked or like, if you're dealing with like extreme hot or extreme cold or like just these types of things will affect your adrenals. And when your adrenals are shot or they're like, you have adrenal fatigue, like it affects everything. It affects your mood. It affects your sleep. It affects everything. And so she was like, you need to stop doing things that are going to trigger that. So anything that doesn't make you feel good or gets you anxious or feeling like irritable or whatever. And for me at the time, I drink like four cups of coffee a day. Little did I know that was a huge root of a lot of my anxiety. So I cut out coffee. I stopped watching murder shows or listening to murder podcasts. um, And I started being really mindful with what I was letting into my life. So I'm just like giving you like, guys, I was with her for an hour and a half. So I'm just giving you like the snippet version, but I got to tell you that day changed my life because I walked out of that. It's in her house. I walked out of her house and I know like 500 of you are going to ask me for her information after this. So, um, we can definitely talk through that, but, um, I would recommend finding one near you just because, um, there's great areodologists everywhere, but you know, it is in her house and it's kind of like based off of like referrals and all that. But anyway, I left her house that day and I remember feeling hope. I remember feeling excited for the future. I remember feeling like, I feel like I just got healed, like mentally, emotionally, spiritually, Oh, another thing that's cool is she gives you a list of all these herbs and supplements that you need, like all plant-based and stuff that you need to go buy at like mother's, like a local natural market. It's not like she opens some cabinet and is like, okay, now buy like all the stuff from me. No, you pay like a one time, it was like $150 or something to see her to go through all of this stuff. And then she sends you to mother's with a list of things that you need. So I got on like adrenal support. I got on like zinc. I got on vitamin D spray. I got on all these different things to help like, oh, she put me on a 10 day para cleanse, which was like to kill the parasite in my stomach. Like there was like all these different things that she put like this protocol that she put me on. And guys, I have to tell you, like I took that day so seriously. I went on a plant-based diet. Um, I'd watched my sister go through this incredible like transformation. And I was like, okay, if that works for her, I'm going to do it. And ultimately now it's the business that Wade and I are in, in our network marketing company. But I started with that. I switched, like I stopped, you know, watching all the murder podcasts. I, um, called red cross and confirmed I'm O positive blood type, which is super crazy. I went to the gynecologist. I had the birth control removed from my arm. I had them confirm there was a fluid filled dime sized cyst on my left ovary, which naturally just ended up like going away on its own eventually. But it was just really crazy. Everything she told me was absolutely spot on. And so I started taking all these supplements. She told me I went plant-based. Um, I stopped drinking coffee. I became so much more mindful of what I was putting in my body 
body, in my mind, on my skin. Like I became very protective of this vessel, this capsule that I live in and was like, I get one life. Like I have felt so shitty for so long and I need to take control of my health and this will like help me, you know? And, um, what's crazy guys. And this is a whole nother podcast, but on August 4th, 2018, which is actually crazy. Cause I'm recording this on August 4th, 2021. So three years ago today was the day that I launched my network marketing business in the health and wellness space, because it had such a profound impact on me that I was like, I need to ha- help other people go through the transformation that I've gone through. And so it was all like the lead up, like seeing this woman, Nan was the lead up to launching my business to setting the strong foundation in the life that I have today. So super, super crazy, but there's always, 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 um, lows before the highs. There's always a dip before the pop. I was not in a good place. And, um, I had to go through all of that to get where I am today. (sighs) But that story always just like rocks my world and gets me so excited because I went in that day, not really knowing what it was going to do, but I've told her before, I'm like, I don't think you realize, but seeing you like change the course of my life, like it really did open my eyes, <laughs> literally and figuratively and whatever, um, opened my eyes to a better life and it changed everything for me. So I hope this inspires you. I hope, um, you listen to this and know that you have the power to take control of your life. If you're not in a good place. Maybe you're in a really, really bad place. Maybe you're really, really struggling. Guess what? You're not alone. I've been there. We've probably all been there. You can take control and completely change your life. I think you have to start with being vulnerable and being open. Had I not gone to my friend, Inessa, and told her like, I'm not okay, she wouldn't have referred me to this person. You know, had I just kept it inside and dealt with it privately... I wouldn't be here today. So it's like, go to the people that you trust. Tell them like, you know, when someone asks you how you're doing, if you're not doing okay, tell them that it's okay to say you're not okay, you know, and that's not a permanent place to be. So I hope that this message resonated with you. I hope that, you know, your stories are just as powerful as mine. And I hope in sharing this, it empowers you to know that, You sharing your journey and the things you've been through, your experiences, your highs, your lows, you are empowering and like giving life to other people in the sense that, you know, there's hope in their journey too. So every time I share that story, people are like amazed and they're like, what's Nan's number? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to overwhelm her. I've already sent her so many freaking people (laughs) with how many people I'm giving her phone number to. So find someone in your area if you know, you're not in Southern California, but, um, it's not just about like the iridologist and like doing that. It's about overall big picture. Like what can you be doing to get in better alignment? Because the whole reason I felt bad in the first place is because I was so far out of alignment. I was letting life control me. I wasn't controlling my life. There's a really big difference between thriving and surviving. I bet you 90% of the population is surviving And in that mode of my life, I was surviving. I was not thriving. Now I'm thriving. Like life is amazing. Things are in line alignment. I'm so, so genuinely happy. I'm healthy. Like I'm on fire about life, about business, about people, about giving back, about making an impact, like you name it. Like I'm on fire with all these things, but I wouldn't be where I am today if I wasn't like literally in my lowest, lowest points. So I think that's my message for today. I would love to know if this story resonated with you, if it brought anything up for you. Um, If you feel like you really need a reset with your health, I would love to help you too. Know that you can send me a message on Instagram at sandyclaws7. Um, You can always visit our website, sandyandwade.com. Wade and I professionally coach people through a clean eating program. We help people detox their lives. We help people focus on their gut health. And then we focus on healthy living from the inside out. We start with the inside and then we talk about all things in your life, your mindset, the products you're using, the people you hang around, like all these things compound, all these things work synergistically together. And our life is a physical manifestation of our thoughts. 
Our life is a physical manifestation of the people we hang around and let in our life. Our life is a physical manifestation of the foods we eat, of the products we use, of the things that we allow to control our thoughts, the things that we let in. There's so much stuff I've learned about all this. So anyway, I would love to help you. I want you to have hope and know that if you're not in a good place or maybe someone in your life isn't in a good place, like they have the power to turn it around and I would love to help you or them. So that's my message. I'm sending you all lots of love, wishing you a glorious day. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. So remember, you are magnetic. Magnetic.